Hey, this is John Carlos here with a look at the Square Enix Play Arts Joker figure. Here's a quick look at the packaging. And in the packaging, he comes with two playing cards, a knife, two alternate hands, and two alternate heads. It also comes with a display stand that you have to assemble yourself. It comes with instructions here on how to assemble it, and instructions on all the accessories. So right off the bat, I really like the paint scheme on the clothes. There's a lot of really good detail and some awesome shading on like his jacket contours, his pants, his vest. Even the folds in the back of his coat are painted and well shaded. And that includes the folds on the inner lining of his coat as well. My only grievance so far is the black around his eyes is so thick that you can barely make out his eyes. But the rest of the detailing on the face is really good. The head on this figure comes off very easily. Here's the regular head that it comes with. Here's an alternative head. The alternative head isn't that much difference. If you look closely, this one's just slightly more furrowed. It's a little more angry over the face in the eyes. Uh, the furrow here smooths out the brow, so this one's a little more of a, a rough brow. And, uh, you know, when I was in the store trying to buy one, uh, I looked at about five or six of them, and most of them all had, like, this smear of black uh, on his eyes that the regular head did not. So now I'm going to put on the alternate head. Well, the first one came off and on really easily. This one doesn't. See, here's the first head easy. Here's the second head. Not so easy. And then there's this head, the bank robber mask. Kind of having a hard time with this one too. But that's okay with me because I'm never going to display this one. Because he never wears the bank robber mask with the purple suit ever. He only wears it in the opening scene with the gray suit. So while it's nice that they included this, it's not really screen accurate to the purple suit at all. Articulation on this figure is pretty solid. You got ankles, you got the knees, which are double knee joints, which comes into good effect. Solid articulation in the legs, including a rubbery pelvis area that allows the legs to come forward. The chain is also made of a rubbery material. A very well placed cut in the torso right through the vest that also just lines up perfectly and can barely be noticed. And the usual swiveling and pivoting wrist, swiveling arms, elbow joint, shoulder joints. And the shoulder not only rotates forward and back and pivots up and down, but it also has a little hinge within the shoulder that allows it to swing forward and swing back. There's also a uh, ball joint at the top of the neck and a swiveling neck. And here's the card put into his hand. Let's see if it fits too. Kinda sorta, yes it does. And here's an alternate hand for holding the knife. None of these joints are loose. They all click and stay in place perfectly, which is great for posability. Then you attach this to that, and you get that. You can assemble two claws, but uh, I don't think I'm really going to be using this because the figure stands really good on its own. This Joker figure turned out pretty good. Much better than the first two figures in this series, Batman and Bane, which I was hugely disappointed by. I was really looking forward to this series as a whole. I like that they're kind of stylized, but not super stylized. They're still reminiscent of the original designs, just slightly more interesting looking. It's a cool approach. And Bane and Batman kind of photographed cool, but when I saw them in person, I just hated them. This is much better, and the Catwoman is also much better. Yeah, Joker's shoulders float out past his arms a little more than I'd like, but that's not enough for me to really hate on the figure. I mean, the detail on the shoes, the detail on his vest, uh, for a figure of, of this size and scale, the paint and the sculpting is really, really solid. I dig it. I recommend it. Thanks for watching.